Hey everyone. Today we're going to be talking about something that's been coming up in my clinical practice. And anytime I see something three times in one week, it tells me, aha, it's time to talk about something. So <clears throat> what we're going to talk about is many people are coming in and they're saying, I really want to help with my bone density, right? I want to get my osteoporosis or osteopenia out of a danger zone and preferably reverse it if possible, or at least not progress any further, right? So I don't want to be coughing and break a rib. I don't want to slip and break my hip, whatever the case is. So what I'm hearing a lot from people is, okay, my doctor is telling me take calcium, 1100, 1500 milligrams per day, whatever the case is. And then what I want to do is I, if that's not going to work for my osteoporosis, osteopenia, I'm going to be on a bone medication, something called a bisphosphonate medication, something like Boniva, for example, or Fosamax, for example. And once I go on those, and that should build up my bone again. Well, that's not what those medications do, but let's talk about this for a second, okay? Number one, calcium alone. Can it actually increase bone density? No. <laughs> if you're ingesting calcium, you're taking in dairy, you're taking in, I don't know, you know, if you look at vegetarian diets, for example, they usually have many milligrams of calcium, 1800 milligrams per day. Ali was just designing a meal program the other day, and she came up with a vegetarian thing that was like 1800 milligrams of calcium from just plant-based foods. So there's calcium in a lot of the diet, but once you get the calcium in the body, can that calcium be absorbed? So that's an interesting piece, right? A lot of people now we'll understand this is why you're taking vitamin D, right? This is why you look at vitamin D because vitamin D will increase some of the calcium channels that pull the calcium into the cell. And then some of the binding protein, something called calbindin, bind the calcium, pull it in, right? That will help deliver the calcium where it needs to go. Okay. So if you don't have adequate vitamin D, let's say your levels are below 30 nanograms per ml, for example, you get about 10 to 15%, 15 on the higher side, right? Of your dietary calcium. Now, if you have adequate vitamin D, which some would argue it's at least above 32 nanograms, but ideally above 40 nanograms per ml, then you're getting in about 30 to 80% of your dietary calcium. Okay, so you ingest the stuff, you might be bathing in the stuff, but if you don't have adequate vitamin D, it's not going to get where you want it to go. So it's super important. You're looking at your vitamin D levels if you want your calcium to come into the body, calcium channels, binding proteins. Now, once the calcium's in the body, what are you going to do? <clears throat> Once the calcium is in the body, hopefully you're going to deliver that calcium to the bone. Now it's another set of proteins and that particular protein that you're concerned about is called osteocalcin. Osteo meaning the bone cell, right? Cal, calcium, get it in. Get the calcium into the bone. Now this osteocalcin, interestingly enough, right, has two little arms on it. And these little arms, right, have negative charges. They're called carboxyl groups. These little arms have little oxygens, little negative charges, and calcium has two positive charges, and they fit perfectly. And they grab onto the calcium, and they bring that calcium right up over to the bone, osteoblast, and incorporate it you're in the bone, right? Awesome. That's what you want. But you know the human body doesn't make these proteins with two arms? When you have an increased need for calcium, when you have a greater level of vitamin D, you start making more of this protein, osteocalcin, to put the calcium in the bone. But when it's made, it's got one arm. It's got one little carboxyl group. And you need another nutrient. And this nutrient is called K2, vitamin K2, to put a secondary arm on this so it can actually grab onto the calcium and deliver it to the bone. If you do not have adequate K2 in the system, you don't deliver enough calcium to the bone. You may end up with calcium in the aorta, in the coronary artery. You may end up with a soft tissue in your knuckles. You may end up with in your brain, increasing Alzheimer's. You don't put the calcium where it needs to go. You have to have these carboxylations, these second arms on these proteins that need vitamin K. So K2, what do you need for that? Well, some say there's great research coming out of Japan, for example, on MK4, a form of K2 called MK4 at 15 milligrams three times a day, increasing bone density tremendously. You could also focus on another form called MK7. And this MK7 is needed in much smaller doses. It's less expensive. And you'll need, depending on the research you look at, 90, 160, 380 micrograms of MK7. But you can test this. If you have osteopenia, if you have osteoporosis, and you're taking calcium, and you're taking vitamin D, but you're not considering the K, you can actually look at this marker. You can go to a functional medicine practitioner like myself, and you can say, hey, I want a vitamin K assay. I want something called an a UCOC or under carboxylated osteocalcin. And I can't tell you how different things are when you're trying to get your bone density up and you have insufficient K and then you add in the K, it jumps up tremendously. It's fantastic. 
Now, here's the wild thing, right? <clears throat> People don't really understand what these bone building medications are, right? They're called osteoclast inhibitors. Okay, they shut off the cells in the bone that reabsorb the calcium from the bone, right? These osteoclast inhibitors, like we mentioned the Boniva, Fosamax, for example, can shut that thing off. But what a lot of people don't tell you, and many doctors aren't telling you, and many practitioners aren't telling you, is that the osteoclast, the thing that pulls apart your bone, is activated by parathyroid hormone when you have insufficient D, number one, but it's also activated by inflammation, by alert and alarm signals to the human body. So most people don't know that the osteoclast comes from a line of what's called pluripotent stem cells, stem cells. And these stem cells, depending on the signals they receive, will either become an immune cell or will become an osteoclast. Now, if it becomes an osteoclast, you have to understand those two cells respond to the same chemical signals. So if you are a person and you are having a terrible diet, you're living a stressful life, you're exposed to a lot of toxins, you have microbial or viral infections, and you have some sort of exposure to allergens, your immune system is gonna turn on. You're gonna start secreting these chemical signals that say alert and alarm, alert and alarm, inflammation. And when you turn on these chemical signals, what happens is you turn on the osteoclast. So in essence, this is basically telling you, look, anytime you think inflammation, you think bone loss. There's great research showing if you can turn off some inflammatory processes, you can actually preserve bone. So it's not just the medication that turns off the osteoclast, it's your lifestyle. If you're eating a diet rich in lots of green leafy vegetables, if you're taking curcuminoids in the form of turmeric or some sort of supplement like Mariva that I recommend in my clinical practice, fantastic. You can turn off some of that osteoclast activity. If you're reducing your stress, you're meditating, for example, you can reduce cortisol secretion by 27%. That's fantastic. You reduce bone loss. Not only does the cortisol get you all excited and excite the immune system, but it also allows you to pee out more calcium. All right, what about the actual toxins? Did you know things like BPA, things like pesticides, actually degrade vitamin D? They actually turn off vitamin D? They degrade it so you can't even use it anymore? Did you know that they excite the immune cells? Did you know that air pollution can excite the immune cells so much that air pollution is, is a greater risk factor for cardiovascular disease than cholesterol. Did you know that when you have microbial infections and you're turning on your immune system all the time, you're helping to decrease bone? Did you know that when you have allergens, food sensitivities, gluten sensitivity, celiac disease, you can actually lessen the amount of calcium that's allowed to come in and increase bone loss via excitation of the immune cells, turning on the osteoclast. So you can't forget you know, yeah, sure, you can turn off the osteoclast with a synthetic substance, and you can turn it off by being conscious of your diet, your stress, your toxins, your microbes, and your allergens. Now, one quick thing I have to mention, my gosh, there's an FDA warning for people who are taking the PPIs, who are taking the acid-blocking medications. Those things will completely shut down your ability to break down a lot of foods and free up the calcium to even get in the body. And they cause an intestinal permeability, which leads to inflammation. So it's a recipe for disaster. There's so much you can do. When you hear from anybody, it's like, oh yeah, well, I've taken my calcium. <laughs> I'm still getting this bone loss. I've tried the Vosfamax, you know, I've tried the Boniva, I've tried these medications, and I'm not making progress. Don't give up. There's so much hope. It's an entire process called functional medicine. Get to the root cause of why your body is in a state of dis-ease. And the root causes are often the same, right? There are things that irritate you, there are things that nourish you. If you're getting irritated and you lack the nourishment, you're not gonna make progress. So look at your diet, look at your stress, look at your toxins, look at your microbes, look at your allergens. Then look at your nutrient density. Are you missing the magnesium? Are you missing the calcium, strontium, boron? What is it that you might be missing? You can test these things. There are nutrient panels that test these things. How are you doing with your sleep-wake cycle? Because that will reduce stress. How are you doing with your exercise? That will stress your bones and create an environment where they'll grow. How are you doing with stress reduction itself, the meditation, peace, yoga, whatnot? How are you doing with social connection? If you balance these things out, 
you can reverse osteoporosis. I have clients that are gluten sensitive, celiac disease. You put them on a gluten free diet, you'll see 25 plus percent increase in bone density. They're already taking calcium. They're already taking vitamin D, but they can't get it into the system because they're not digesting and absorbing well. So please, <clears throat> I hope you think broadly when you think of osteoporosis. Like any disease, this is a system you're talking about. This is a dynamic, beautiful human body. And this body has specific needs. And when you meet those needs, it behaves beautifully. It gives you exactly what you need. You have strong bones, you have a sharp mind, you have tons of energy, and life is glorious. All right, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it benefits you. I hope you share it with friends that are dealing with osteoporosis and osteopenia. If you want to learn further about the foundations of functional medicine, please look at my progressive practitioner coaching program that I have. Join me online. Watch more of our Facebook stuff. Email us. Join our newsletter list. And my goodness, I hope you have a happy, healthy life. All right, my friends. Take care. Bye-bye now.